Welcome back to another episode of Operation American Dream. I'm your host, Amy Scruggs, and we have a great lineup today. We're gonna to talk about healing arts and theater. We are gonna be talking to the family of the new Navy war warship, the USS Rafael Peralta. That's gonna be a very powerful time to talk to them. And we've got just some other special guests really lined up with a quick mortgage minute. So let's get started right now. back with Operation American Dream. I'm your host, Amy Scruggs. We have two dynamic women today from Cal State San Marcos University who specialize in healing arts and how that impacts our veterans. Eliza Bigum, Dr. Eliza Bigum, and Marilyn Huerta. Thank you so much for being here today. Thanks for this having us. This is fun, fun, fun. I love the university. Um, we already had a guest on the last show from the university, and you guys are just doing so many things. We're going to touch on a special Wounded Hearts project, though. Marilyn, you've been working with art therapy and healing therapy and how that's working to help veterans. So tell me what it is, your passion, where it comes from, and what you're doing. Um, it's kind of a long story short, but I'll try and keep it quick. Um, I'm an artist myself, and I work at the university, um, working with a lot of different populations using art um, as a tool, <clears throat> excuse me, to help cope, uh, connect, and communicate. And, but the veteran population is very um, close and dear to my heart. <laughs> I was born into the military family. My father uh, was a Vietnam veteran. And so wow. What the, branch of service was your father? Uh, he was Air Force. Nice. But that I was also my married dad. a Marine. <laughs> and my grandfather was Navy. My brother, Army. Um, also have a, a son who's active Marine and a daughter who's in the Coast Guard. Wow. Um, thank you. Yeah. So, so it's I'm, in your DNA. You yes. le eat, sleep, yes. and breathe passion for veteran affairs, right. clearly. Right, and growing up a military um, child, um, I wanted to support in any way that I could. And being an artist, I, I you know, revoted to my art and um, being an art major at the university as well. Um, I use art as that tool, um, like I said, to connect people and to help and to help support the veteran population. So, so how are you bringing this to the university? What are you doing with the students? when it comes to art and therapy for the veterans? Well, my, my role there is a communicate, uh, communication specialist, which means I highlight our programs and what we do in our education, um, health, and human services. Um, but I reach out to the students to, uh, to participate with me. And so we go and volunteer at an organization called Interfaith Community Services up in North County. Right. And um, we feel state uh, workshops. We do anything from group mural projects to individual projects. And our students come in, and sometimes when we first start, um, the veterans are not so sure they want to be there, well, why they're there, and, and sometimes you can read their body language as, you know, I'm not sure, uh, should I be doing this? But as soon as we um, present our prompt and, and some art materials, um, they just open up, and uh, the whole room, the energy <laughs> changes. <laughs> um, it's positive, it's giving yeah. people a chance to talk and share, and, and um, like I said, we use the, the art as a tool. It's not to decorate the walls, it's not um, to make masterpieces, it's just that opportunity for them to communicate and, and connect with other people and to cope with whatever they're going through. Wow. Eliza, your specialty is working with the students that are primarily going into human services. That's true. Which means that they need to be prepared for all aspects of serving humans and this all of their true. needs. This so tell true. me what you see from that perspective, dealing with the students and making them prepared and how this pulls together. Well, like you said, the students are going primarily into different types of human services, whether it's education or nursing, um, counseling, advising, and they need to be prepared by getting an opportunity to experience diverse people, diverse populations, um, diverse contexts. And this opportunity that we have to collaborate with Marilyn gets us it gets me the ability to take my students and put them in with um, military. And the military, I believe, is probably the most diverse population that we have. Absolutely. Ac uh -huh. Across anywhere. You've got every culture, every Everything. background, every social and economic all coming together of that course. serves. And then here in San Diego County, it's a huge population, large population. I also have military uh, family background, as you uh, know, my husband is a... Um, a Vietnam veteran. My father was in the Navy. Right. And um, so I have a special passion for it as well. But I really appreciate this opportunity that we have with Marilyn. So what happens with, with the program that we run together, the students go and weekly they go out and, and Marilyn facilitates and, and runs the program that she described. And then they come out and meet with me every week. 
and we process what's happened. So we process what it is that they observed, what they're personally feeling, the things that are changing, um, because the process of healing arts is what we're actually looking at when we're doing our class, is what is it that actually changes? Why does healing arts work? What is it that's actually right. changing? Biological, cognitively, physiological, all the different levels where it actually helps people. Can, is there an example that you can picture where you saw like an aha moment with one of the students in this? So many. Okay. Yeah, I, <laughs> I figured one. there would be. Which one? Oh, yeah, really over and over again. I'm thinking like semester by semester. We've been doing this program over two years now. Right. So we have lots of students that have gone through the program. We keep it limited. We keep it to you know under five students per uh, project can go through. More than that would be um, just too large for it. So um, I'm thinking a particular student, um, this is actually just from last semester, where um, just watching her face around probably weeks seven, eight, nine, where she'd come into me and she'd say, oh, oh. <laughs> and she'd talk during the process moment where she'd talk about, I can't believe this. And he was so quiet in here. And then I could see that he came across the room and then we're starting to talk this. And now he's sharing these stories with me that are so precious. It allows and, them to open up, Absolutely. Right? Mm -hmm. and, and she said, Healing I therapy. could tell that he's mm -hmm. actually connecting back with things from way before. And she said, I could see that that's where part of where the healing comes from, is we have this big experience in the middle, which is full of all right. kinds of different layers and, and uh, et cetera. But, but she said, I could tell that he's coming back to here and that that's part of the healing process. Oh, it's but, fantastic. But just watching the stu students explain it, because I'm, you know, I'm not always right. there in the room, but watching them explain it and see as a future health practitioner that she now has that under her belt and has explained it in both her write-up, her presentations, her That's incredible. Mm -hmm. You guys are yeah. making a difference to the veterans, and you're training right. the next generation of students to have an awareness to go out and make a difference mm -hmm. to our future veterans right. from here forward. Thank you so much for the work yeah. that you guys are doing. Thank excited you to for follow the work it. that you're doing. I love it. I love being connected with great women like you guys. So thank you very, very much. <laughs> thank, you. thank you. We'll be back with more Operation America. certain times in life when you need a neutral third party to call the shots. I wasn't ready. I know, I know, but I wasn't ready. I wasn't, you hear me? Keep it fair. Choose Oakwood Escrow. We're back with Operation American Dream. I'm your host, Amy Scrubs. We're going to have some fun talking more about not just healing arts, but also all of the arts, music, theater. I have wonderful guests here today, and we're gonna dive right into talking about how you impact a military town with theater. So I'm gonna start over here, though, with Mr. Bill Ims. Bill? Hi. And I've got David Schultz with me today. Hello. Thank you so much for being here. Bill, you and I go way back, all the way to North County, San Diego. You are a very well-known real estate broker in this community. We've done some great business together. Um, you are an MC and a host at a lot of the North County San Diego Association of Realtor events. Everybody in the town knows you. You've done incredible work um, in the real estate business. They're very well known and respected. So thank, thank you. you so much thank you. For, for your work in, in, in real estate. How, how is business up there right now? You know, it's great. You hear good news. You, sometimes you hear news which is not so good every day. But today, interest rates dropped a little bit. Isn't and there are a couple great? of great new loan programs out. A person with a decent credit score of 680 might be able to buy a home with just 1% down. Thank you, Bill. See? This is why people love you. And that voice, how do you miss it? Well, Bill, you came to me a couple years ago and you told me about an amazing theater in Oceanside called the Star Theater. And you brought me to one of the shows, fell in love right away, got my daughter involved with the program. And now I have watched over the last few years as Star Theater has done an incredible job making an impact on Oceanside, the military town, and all of San Diego. Everybody knows about Star Theater. David, this yeah. obviously being a passion for you, this is your, your baby, it's been a family business. Did your mother start the theater? That's correct, yeah. So tell me a little bit about that, um, on how the theater started and how long ago. So it's about 30 years ago now that uh, Ann Schultz and her partner Bobby Janikis, who are both, grew up in Encinitas, and we were all there 
back in the day, and there was just no theater in North County at the time. Right. So um, my mother has a degree in theater, and so we were originally from Chicago. So she said, we're going to start a theater company, and this is, I was probably seven at the time, and they did, and over the years, they just grew to the point where the theater was able to buy the Star Theater in Oceanside in 2000. 2000, In 2000, right. and it was a single screen movie theater, and now it is a thriving performing arts center. It's so, it's right in the heart. So yeah. if you're going right up the street from the pier, we're in the heart on Pacific Coast Highway there right. of Oceanside, which is really the center of so much of the military town there. Right. What have you seen as far as the impact that's made on the military town and the military families that have come through the theater? It's been amazing. In the last 10 years, I'd say, you know, we've started the theater and arts district in Oceanside and Bill and I were really championing that a few years ago and it's really caught on. We have multiple museums downtown Oceanside, two thriving theater companies and of course we are neighbors to the military. Right. And for me it is such an amazing way for us to offer these uh, programs to the families of the military people because you know obviously without them we wouldn't have the freedoms that we so enjoy now. Right. So. Um, in a way, it's so nice for us to be able to give back to the families. And there are so many families on base that just don't either know about us yet or haven't really ventured off base to kind of enjoy what we have to offer. And over the last few years, that's really changed. And we're seeing more and more families from the base now. Well, which is so great, great because the families can be in the shows. You have a lot of the different mm -hmm. shows that are all ages to audition and right. be a part of where you can have, an, I've seen entire families be a part of the show right. in different magnitudes. So it's a way for them to bond together, mm -hmm. but then also just to go visit and see the productions are top notch Thank professional. You. Thank you. Really, really, really outstanding. And it's affordable. So families right. can come, if they're not interested in being in theater, they can come enjoy theater. So you've got both of those aspects that you're contributing to the community there. Yeah, we've got uh, almost a 600 seat theater up there in uh, Oceanside. So we put on huge productions and they're always these grand musicals and, and some of them are youth oriented. Two of the shows out of the year are youth and then the rest are all ages or adults. And you're right, we have full families that come in and they enjoy the show together. They bring in all their neighbors to come see the show and it turns out to be this really amazing experience for the community. But we service people from as far south as El Cajon all the way up to San Clemente. So it's amazing right. what the outreach that we're doing right now. And Bill, you've been such a special part of it. Weren't you on the board of directors for quite some time? Yes, uh, for about 10 years and I was president for the uh, last four just an amazing organization and that's of course what I introduced you to and of course your daughter became a star at the Star Theater. Well and you guys did, did one of the shows together that first year she was in it. You play such a fun role every year at Christmas time you guys do the production of Annie. It's right. it's sold out every year you guys have added second weekend now the last couple mm -hmm. of years because mm -hmm. it's you know made such an impact. Bill what role do you play? Well I play FDR and it was so much fun because when we initially started out, we had one of those chrome wheelchairs with naugahyde uh, leatherette material. I said, this doesn't quite work. And I searched for two years for a wooden wheelchair of the era. And I was able to get the exact twin of FDR's wheelchair, which is on stage every year every at year. the Star for Annie. It's so much fun. What production do we have coming up right now? We open tomorrow with West Side Story. That's fantastic. And that We're runs through uh, the end of July, so we on through July 30th. So we can still get tickets? You sure Everybody? can. Okay, yeah. where can people go to get tickets? StarTheaterCo.com. Awesome. Seats available. Yeah. Seats available. It's tickets amazing available. cast. You got really some military kids in this one too? Some we military do. families? Yeah. Actually, these are military adults. We actually have two Marines who are in the cast with us. Oh, and that's awesome. Just great guys, hard workers, of course, and they bring a lot of great energy. That's so fun. Yeah. That's so fun. There, there's so many ways to give back. And I, thank you so much for being on the show today. David, Bill, you guys are both us. very special to me. Thank you for what you do to give back to the veteran and military community. And I just want to say, everybody, please go to Star Theater Co. Check out the productions they have year on audition or just go watch. It's worth it. And go support what a great military town that is up there in Oceanside. We'll be right back with more Operation American Dream. As a real estate professional, there are only so many hours of the day, which means efficiency is more than a buzzword. It's a daily necessity. 
two tools from First American Title can help you keep on top of your transactions, either at your desktop or on the go. MyFirstAM puts comprehensive property data at your fingertips, where you can review recorded documents, past transactions, or locate comparable sales quickly and easily. CostFirst can also ensure you have 24-7 access to closing cost data, allowing you to generate net sheets, calculate fees, update documents, or email, print, or save your reports, along with TRID calculation and consummation date timeframes. Each sale includes a number of stages to manage, each with the possibility to delay a closing or derail it altogether. Let Cost First and My First Dam keep your transactions on track. Contact your local First American representative to get started today. Welcome back to Operation American Dream. I'm your host, Amy Scruggs. On July 29th, the Navy is commissioning a new warship called the USS Rafael Peralta. A very special day here in San Diego for us with a very special ship. And today on the show right now, we have the Peralta family to talk about Rafael Peralta, his sacrifice, and all the events that are leading up this week to a very reverent and powerful event. Thank you so much, Isela Peralta. Thank you for being here. Rosa Peralta, Rafael's mother. And you are Rafael's sister. Correct. I am so honored to be doing this interview with you. Um, we're going to be together on Monday at Petco Park, as yeah, you're going to be honored at the Padres game yeah. for the service of your brother and, and his sacrifice and the events leading up to the commissioning of this amazing ship. And then 29th is the event on that Saturday, which is going to be wonderful. And yes. um, so please, I would love to hear from you. Would you share about the story of your brother? Um, and why the city is coming together to honor him in this way. So I think it's, it's, a, it's, it's big, it's, it's big for us. Um, we have a lot of people from Mexico coming and you know, they have never seen the, sh the ship and um, it's just an honor. He's, he's our hometown in San Diego, um, adopted city, but we're from right. Mexico and you know, so. He joined the Marines the day after getting his green card. The same right? day. The same actually. day. <laughs> yeah, the same day, yes. He, he already, was so excited to serve. Yes, he had, um, he had, he was really focused. He, he knew what he wanted to do. Um, in the process of getting our papers, our, our green card, um, you know, he was, he was going to college. He, the California Conservation Corps, always involved in um, sports and church. So he kept himself really busy and, mm -hmm. you know, whenever he finally got his green card that day, um, in the morning and the afternoon, he already had signed. He never told anybody. I mean, we knew he, you know, he wanted to be enlisted in the Marines. He prepared himself. Um, and yeah, so he came and told my mom, mom, um, I'm leaving, I'm going to the Marine Corps. <laughs> wow. So yeah, that was his passion. He'd really desire, you know, to be a Marine and serve. And he's country. a true war hero. Do you mind sharing the sacrifice that your brother made? Uh, well, in the Battle of Felicia, it was in 2004. Um, we didn't never knew about it. war, you know, you know, when he was gonna leave, but it was, it was when everything started to happen, you know, and um, I know he was, he was leaving, but I never thought that he wasn't going to come back. And so that he was clearing houses um, on November 15th. Um, I guess they went to the seventh house and he volunteered that day. I think he, he was supposed to take off and, you know, sleep. And he volunteered and, you know, to be part of that, that squad. Mm -hmm. And um, so they were clearing houses. They, he kicked the door and they're starting some, some shooting, and so he fell into the ground, he got wounded or shot, and then eventually they threw a grenade and the grenade landed right next, next to him, and then he grabbed it and put it under his chest and saved about their seven Marines in the house. Wow. Mm -hmm. I am, thank you so much for his service. I can't imagine what that was like, Mom. Thank you for the service of your son. Por el sacrificio de tu hijo. Rosa, how do you feel como having the city come together to honor your son in this way? Pues, me siento muy, muy contenta porque, pues, lo que hizo mi hijo es súper grande, ¿no? Y todavía lo, no lo, no lo capto, pero estoy muy emocionada y 
pues le doy gracias a, a Dios por darme ese hijo tan valioso. Vice President, so she's very thankful, and you know she um, she didn't translate what he was happening. Sorry, um, she's just very grateful, and you know she's very thankful that God sent her that a blessing of a joy of a son, and you know it's. I it's, do. It's, I have three sons. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Three sons. Yeah. Yes, I do understand. <laughs> I am mm -hmm. so honored to be a part of the commissioning service with your family and on behalf of the entire city here of San Diego and our nation, thank you so much for all that you've done as a family and the sacrifice. And we were very thankful, the city, thank you. you know, it's finally here Yes, and this is his hometown and, you know, we were just excited, you know, just mm -hmm. really nervous, but we're really Excited. It's just going to be a beautiful day. It is, and then we're going to celebrate all of the crew yes. of the new sh of the ship <laughs> and all of the journey that they're going to have. And I think it's going to be a beautiful, bittersweet time. Thank yes. you for taking the time to be on the show today. Thank Look you forward for to being us. with you guys at this incredible event. Thank you. We'll be back with more Operation American Dream. We're back with Operation American Dream. I'm your host, Amy Scruggs. We've got a great mortgage minute with Jason Hall, Team Home Loans, a branch of Synergy One Lending. Jason, thank you so much for being here. Thanks, Amy. I appreciate it. I love it. working with you, Jason. I know. We've known each other for years, but this is like the first time we've been on TV together. Finally. We've done some finally. radio. We're finally doing some TV. Yeah. We're going to talk about interest rates yeah. and how that impacts the purchase, purchase power. Yeah. So, so rates, are, rates are still low. And the thing that a lot of us forget is we think that rates are going to stay low forever. Right? I've been doing this for quite a while where I remember 9% was a low rate and 65 used to be the old floor. Well, when I quote a rate today and tell somebody, hey, rates are four or four and a half or five, they think that's super high because <laughs> we've gotten so used to three, three and a half percent Everybody's rates. Everybody's gotten spoiled, right? We've gotten spoiled. So one of the things that we have, we can get to you and your audience at Jason at teamhomeloans.com is buying purchasing power. What I mean by that, as rates go up a quarter percent, Amy, you lose $10,000 in buying in power, power as a borrower, right? So if rates go up a full percent, that means you lose $40,000 in buying power. Meantime, home prices keep going up. Right. So the longer you wait, the more it could cost you. So time now is to buy. So the time's to buy. Time's one, of the, to buy. one of the nice things we have, free appraisal for our veterans, and we'll pay all the closing costs. Fantastic. So that's one of the, one of the Thank benefits. you, Jason. Appreciate Reach out it. to Team Home Loans, Synergy One Lending. Thank you. We'll be back with more Operation American Dream. We're back with Operation American Dream. I'm your host, Amy Scruggs. Got a wonderful guest here today that we are going to be interviewing in Salt Lake City, Utah. I have got Josh Vanderbrink, who's got 14 years in special operations and service. And I'd like to um, get right into it and talk to Josh about his amazing service. Josh, welcome. Thanks for being on the show today. Thank you so much. It's great to get to do this. So is it really true, 21 deployments? Yeah, so a lot of that was with uh, the Air Force, and some of it I uh, worked for the federal government out of D.C. For, uh, for a number of years toward the later part of my career. Wow, thank you so much for your service, first and foremost. Uh, where are some of the places, name, name a few places you've deployed, and uh, a couple memories of that. Um, almost every trip uh, for me was to Afghanistan. I did a little bit of time in Iraq uh, with the Department of State, but most of it was all Afghanistan. I did one in Africa. Uh, in the, the Horn of Africa right there with some different spots. Wow, that's incredible. Thank you for your years of service and all that you did. Um, you have taken your service and your passion, obviously, for being in the military and serving our country to the next level with your talent in iron making. You own a business called Ironside Design. And tell us about what it is you do and the passion that you have and how that's grown into such an amazing, successful business. Uh, yeah, so I started this about two years ago. Um, I grew up, my family was always in construction. So even in San Diego, growing up there, I did construction. Uh, and so I've always been into welding or fabrication or custom uh, uh, crafts, you know, uh, carpentry, things like that. So when I started the company, I was really geared more toward the construction side of, of steel fabrication, railing, uh, fences, things like this. And, and we just tighten up our shot group into more furniture related things. Did you love it from the beginning? Was this something you knew you always wanted to do? Yeah, even my last uh, 
you know, half a dozen years in the military, all I talked about was when I got out, this is what I was doing. So uh, I'm really happy to do it. Even deployed, I'd always find ways to, to be building things or improving a fire base or, uh, uh, funny enough, really kind of doing more general contracting in austere locations as far as uh, putting in security structures and, you know, uh, more of the blue collared elements of what we did where we needed to know slope and uh, drainage and runoff and, and things like that. And growing up in that community, I, I was able to bring that. So. You make a specialty American flag that's been pretty high demand, am I right? Yeah, so we do. Uh, I, I came up with the first one two, about two years ago. My dad and I made it uh, in the shop late one night. So I started in a really tiny shop and with no customers, I thought the most important thing I could do is uh, get a flag up to get going. So we made a steel American flag uh, by oxidizing the steel so we don't use any paint or anything like that. Um, and sorry, I feel like the thing keeps ringing. Um, but no, so we, we oxidize the steel and we go ahead and uh, glaze them over so it's a black and red finish on, the, on a steel surface. You can see them on the wall behind me. That's incredible. I've seen your work. It's amazing. We're excited to have you maybe come up with some designs that we can use here at the studio at American Dream and Operation American Dream. It'd be really yeah. incredible to be able to display your work. And uh, we thank you for your service and the work you're doing. What's the website that people can go to to check out all your work and get one of your pieces? Yeah, it's called uh, ironmountaindesigns.com. Uh, it's just our name, uh, .com for our website. Um, for anybody that's a veteran, we do offer a 15% discount on anything that we make uh, just to support people who've you know, done so much for, for my family and I. Thank you um, for that, Josh. Community. Thank, so, thank so you so much. Direct, there's, Wonderful. There's no code on the site, but if they call, uh, call the office here, half time I answer the phone anyways, and, and we'll hook them up. Great. Thank you so much for your service and the great work that you're doing, continuing on serving our vets. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We'll be back with more Operation American Dream. As a real estate professional, there are only so many hours of the day, which means efficiency is more than a buzzword. It's a daily necessity. Two tools from First American Title can help you keep on top of your transactions, either at your desktop or on the go. My First Stand puts comprehensive property data at your fingertips, where you can review recorded documents, past transactions, or locate comparable sales quickly and easily. Cost First can also ensure you have 24-7 access to closing cost data, allowing you to generate net sheets, calculate fees, update documents, or email, print, or save your reports, along with TRID calculation and consummation date timeframes. Each sale includes a number of stages to manage, each with the possibility to delay a closing or derail it altogether. Let Cost First and My First Dam keep your transactions on track. Contact your local First American representative to get started today. What a great show today. Wonderful lineup of guests as always. It was such an honor to get to talk with the Peralta family. Ship commissioning coming up. What a wonderful time for San Diego to honor a hero that we had here from our own town. Don't forget to follow us on social media, Facebook, YouTube. Send your friends to our page. We have great episodes coming up ahead, guests lined up all the way up through the fall. You don't want to miss it.